Are you looking for a lightweight rucksack to support yourself on multi-day adventures? Well, if you are, look no further than the Atom Packs Mo. Ta-da! All right, folks, welcome to another video. My name is Abby, and this is Spend More Time in the Wild. It is a beautiful winter's morning, and I'm really excited to be hanging out with you guys today, because as I've already mentioned, today we're talking about the Atom Packs Mo. So this is the 50 litre capacity rucksack. It's lightweight, it's durable, and it's designed to see you through multi-day adventures wherever you are in the world. Now for me personally, I'm pretty passionate about Atom Packs and their mission because they are all about environmental sustainability and treading lightly on this planet. They're based in Cumbria and all of their products really reflect this journey that they're on to immersing customers in the natural world and offering them epic experiences on their adventures. So today what we're going to do is break down the Mo into all of its awesome components and features to basically help you decide whether or not this is a product that you'd like to invest in. So it weighs in at just over 900 grams and it retails at 265 pounds. Now there is a hefty price tag, but if you actually have a look at the Atom Packs website, you'll see just why it costs what it costs. These are beautifully handcrafted and just so much love and attention goes into this piece of equipment. They're constantly evolving, constantly learning, Learning. and the super cool thing about it is yes the Mo comes in this design and this pattern but Atom Packs have so much custom customization features on their website it's really worth taking a closer look. Now one of the things you can customize straight off is the actual size of the pack so they've got small to extra large and then you can customize the size of the hip belt as well so that it completely fits you so you've got the torso and the hip belt these are the two things that ultimately uh, affect how well a rucksack fits us and so from the off you can get a pack that is completely designed for you and for your body to make your life so much more comfortable when you're out and about on the trail. Now the load capacity or the maximum load capacity for this rucksack is 19 kilograms. They tend to suggest sort of sticking around the 10, 12 kilogram mark. Um, for me, that can sometimes be a little bit difficult with all of my camera gear. And that's why I've really been playing around with the overall comfort of this rucksack when I've got a heavier load on the trail. But generally speaking, whether you're out on a day hike or a multi-day trip, this thing is gonna see you through rather nicely. So from the off then, let's talk about fabrics. So I've mentioned this being a durable rucksack and it really, really is. No matter how much you throw this around or get it caught on things, honestly, it's gonna survive. It's a bit of a Roman soldier in its full metal armor when it comes to surviving out and about on adventures. So the material of the body and the base is 210 denier robotic extrema. On the back of the rucksack, so the back panel, is 500 denier textured nylon. And the mesh on the front pocket and the bottom pocket are Dyneema mesh. And ultimately, there's a whole bunch of Ecopax EPX200 on here as well. Now, if you like that broken down into what the flip does all of that actually mean, have a look on the Atom Packs website and they break down sort of the, the components of all of the different fabrics. But the one word there that I will break down for you is denier, because for me, that is the standout wow feature of this rucksack to really highlight that robustness. So denier is essentially a term used in equipment for the density of the weaves. It's how tightly uh, those fabrics are interlocked together. So the higher that number, the more robust and durable and snag proof that fabric really is. So your average waterproof tends to be sort of 70 denier, but then if you're looking at something like this, which is a down jacket, I would hazard a guess this is 20 denier. Quite often you see feathers poking out of it. Um, so to have a 210 and 500 denier components on this rucksack, I mean, honestly, it's absolutely phenomenal. They have really packed, um, packed those fibers together to make this thing as robust and strong as possible. So that's sort of a little bit on the, the fabrics just to help break that down. And you can sort of then get an idea of how it sort of feels, um, particularly if you can get your hands on one of these to have a little play around with. So let's come to the front pocket then. So we talked about this being Dyneema mesh. It's stretchy, it's elasticated. We've got elasticated draw cords on the front here as well, which are very snazzy orange. As you can see, quite a lot of my orange. <laughs> um, for 
example's sake, I've basically just chucked a Patagonia jacket in there. I can get rid of that now, um, just to show you the size and capacity of this. So it's it's not it's really very stretchy. Again, it's quite a nice dense weave. So if a bramble gets caught in that, it's very unlikely that it's going to sort of shred a massive hole in it. Um, it's cut at this quite snazzy angle, actually, sort of pulling it up to one side. Um, and for me, it's just a very nice sized outside pocket and I know they're not everybody's cup of tea but for me I love an outer pocket for stuffing stuff in whether it's snacks or clothing or tent or anything like that um, super easy quick access having that pocket there on the front coming to the side we've talked about these two and a half litre side pockets here so they ultimately have a draw cord on the top so you can make them as tight or as loose as you want to Ow, cold hands, don't recommend slapping yourself with elastic. <laughs> um, but again, really, really well made. The stitching is just so immaculate here. Um, this is very nice, light, thin fabric. Um, but what I find quite nicely about these side pockets is it's very easy when you're on the trail using your rucksack to actually get the water bottles in and out. Certainly don't have any problem with the height there. But again, there's a nice good capacity so you could have a couple of smart water bottles. Um, or for example, sake here, I've chucked in my one litre Nalgene bottle, um, which fits very, very comfortably. And I can get that in and out. I could probably always put some walking poles or something in there if I want to. Um, although there are walking pole options on this rucksack. Then each side we've also again got this adjustable tension cord so it's a nice um, very easily glove compatible um, adjustment point here at the top so you can add or lessen off the elastic to pull things nice and tight if you want to um, so that's sort of those little features just sticking with the front of the rucksack we again have an ice axe loop here on the bottom which is super simple easy to use there's nothing fancy fancy about that uh, and then on the bottom this is certainly one of the more interesting features it's uh not necessarily everybody's cup of tea that i've spoken to but i think it's uh, quite nice we again have a mesh pocket right on the bottom of the rucksack and it's accessible via one side and it goes right along the base of the rucksack. It's the same mesh as far as I can tell as the one um, on the front. And uh, yeah, I mean, a nice place to put, again, walking poles or tent or whatever it is you want to shove in there, sit mat. But um, anyway, that's just there. I haven't personally found a way to use that yet. <laughs> um, I found this rucksack interesting because it's challenged my current setup for my multi-day kit. Um, quite often I actually tie my tent to the bottom uh, because it's just what I've always done and I quite like doing it. Uh, but obviously with this one, we have no attachment loops on the bottom. I tried to stuff it in there, in the pocket, didn't work. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's certainly got me thinking and I like that. I like to be challenged. Um, so that's some thoughts on the outer features. Let's have a look at the back of the rucksack. So there's a few things to talk about here, and this really is where the thought and design and passion comes into this rucksack, because as I've talked about, they're, they're really doing everything they can to maximize uh, comfort with a very low weight product. So we have the main back panel here. There is no mesh, this is fabric, um, but straight away at the bottom, you can see this quite large lumbar pad. So that's really nice because it sits in the base of your spine and just sort of helps lift the rucksack off your back, which I find to be exceptionally comfortable. It's 10 millimeters thick and it's got a nice cushion to it. And what we'll be able to see when we open up the main compartment shortly is what's actually going on in here, but I'm gonna talk you through that now. So in here, we've actually got a frame and it is made of plastic and alloy. So this sheet is actually malleable, so you can really mold it to the shape of your back so that your rucksack fits nice and closely and snugly against your spine. And what that's gonna do is just help keep the weight of the rucksack when it's fully loaded in the right places on your body. And of course, that's then gonna help induce, or increase sorry, your endurance when you're out and about hiking for multi-day trips. So what else have we got here? We've got the shoulder straps. Um, these are very, very well padded. Again, I would hesitate to say there's 10 millimeters, if not thicker. Um, I haven't got the stats off the top of my mind there. Uh, and then both of these shoulder straps here, we have got um, some pockets, essentially, stretchy mesh pockets. These are thinner mesh than the bottom and the front mesh. Um, but you could comfortably fit a mobile phone in there, a Garmin inReach. As my mate likes to say, those are Polo Mint pockets. <laughs> um, although these ones are actually much bigger, which is great. Um, batteries, whatever it is you need, nice and accessible when you're out and about on the move. And again, as with 
most rucksacks these are adjustable on the top here so you can pull them nice and tight um, you don't to, to know that a rucksack is fitting you properly you shouldn't be able to fit a fist or a hand between your shoulder and the strap it should fit nice and snugly against your body um, moving down the shoulder straps we have a sternum strap which just clips together <laughs> nice and easy and then we have the adjustment points on the bottom to again lock that in so when you're fitting a rucksack you tend to fit the hip belt first so it's sitting nice and comfortably then you pull everything nice and tight on the shoulder straps and that's how you make sure that the thing is fitted properly now we talked about hip belt so the hip belt is actually an addition to this rucksack so some people don't like to hike with a hip belt and that's absolutely okay but for me i do it's part of my standard setup the pad comes in various sizes, as we've talked about, so you can get it so it fits you perfectly. And it's four inches wide, so you've got a really nice large surface area to sit against those hips to take the bulk of the weight of the rucksack. Um, again, it's sort of this padded 10 millimeter um, foam with the nice breathable mesh that they've created for this rucksack and then what we can do is we can add on if you want to hip belt pockets i really like these pockets they're super lightweight they clip on very very nicely securely i will hasten to add to the hip belt itself and for me they're absolutely essential because when i'm out on a shoot i need my camera equipment so for me i tend to keep my spare lens in one of these pockets the other side is sometimes spare batteries that sort of thing um, occasionally the old snack might sneak in there <laughs> um, and they're completely removable so um, I'm a big lover of hip belt pockets and I think a lot of people are to be honest so they're a very 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 good size if that's something that interests you on the rucksack. So the final thing about this hip belt is there are actually four tensioning off points so rather than having the very traditional sort of one strap pull it tight it's attached to you set up there are four here so they're sort of you can cross pull them and I just really like that because again you can really distribute that weight very comfortably across your hips if there's one sore point that's rubbing a bit you can adjust it um, so for me it's again just really really well thought out and it shows that the people who've designed this very um, obviously have been out hiking and decided to modify the classic design to challenge tradition and build something that actually makes life a lot more comfortable when you're out and about on the trail. Uh, let's whip this thing round and let's have a talk about the main compartment. So we have got 15 millimeter straps here just as in the, the hip belt, pretty sure they're 15 millimeters anyway. Um, and again we sort of got this Y design for tensioning so on the top or the back we've got two points where we can pull this tight and they are very very generous with the size of this strap so if you wanted to you could possibly fit a small bear canister in there or tent or anything else you want to dry out whilst you're out hiking and again nice easy clip to use there and then we have a roll top closure so there's no brain or head or top on this rucksack it is simply a piece of fabric that you roll down <laughs> to the size of your rucksack being full and then you clip it together or unclip it in my case. So rolling that up we have two nice little buttons to keep the thing together and then we have access to the main compartment. Here we go and what you can see is I've now emptied it and ultimately there is 45 litres worth of space in here. So um, there's not, not a lot to show you. It's just a gaping big hole that you can fill with cool stuff. There is a small clip inside. So if you did want to attach a hydration bladder, you can do that and it comes out. Does it come out at all? Huh. Well, apologies. I seem to have got that wrong. It doesn't actually come out. There isn't a hose spot as far as I can see. So I guess you just have to thread that um, through the top or around the top. Oh, no, hang on. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Happy days. That is so nifty. Basically, what they've done is they've got a slight overlap piece of fabric here right on the corner and it feeds through. Oh, I like that. That's very nice. Um, I'm generally not a hydration bladder person user, so that's why I haven't played with that. But that is nice. I like it. And then the only other thing I want to do is actually tempt fate. <laughs> and unzip the, uh, or unclip rather, the elastic here, or whatever it's called, Velcro, that's the one, and then show you, this is the frame. So you see it's that plastic, and you've got the metal alloy here in the center. You've got a nice piece of foam which goes against the back, and that's what you can actually malleu ma malleable, you can malleable it. You can <laughs> play around with <laughs> and make it fit your body. And then once you've done that, you really shouldn't need to, to do that again but I'm gonna just tuck that away because I feel like I'm potentially gonna ruin the setup that I've designed if I play around with that too much. But there we go. That basically concludes 
this um, <clears throat> breaking apart or picking apart of the Atom Packs mode. So it's ridiculously light, it's ridiculously customizable, it's ridiculously well built. Um, for me, I've absolutely loved journeying with it. Um, just as I say, being challenged by the features to change my setup. And I have wanted to shoot this review for a while in order to share my experiences with you. Um, I haven't really got anything negative to say about it. Uh, I'm just, I'm so enthused by the fact that it's produced in Cumbria. Um, I love the company. I find them uh, just beautiful in their customer service and interaction. They're just such a passionate bunch of people. And you know what? I, I need to stress, this is not a sales pitch. This is 100% my opinion, my thoughts and beliefs and experiences. And here on Wild, you know, I'm all, about, I'm all about authenticity and just empowering you guys to make decisions about what kit is right for you when you're out and about on the trail. The truth is you don't have to spend hundreds or thousands of pounds. You can just go to Sports Direct and get a rucksack and go for a hike. But if you are further along the line um, and keen to purchase equipment that is good for the environment or certainly has a lesser impact on the environment and the people that produce it and is going to enhance your quality of life when you're out and about on the trail or on adventures, then for me Atom Packs is a really, really good place to start. So I hope this has been insightful for you. I hope you've enjoyed learning about this rucksack. I'm actually going to pack it up now and go for a hike myself uh, because it is such a beautiful day and it's certainly not one to be missed. But I want to thank you for your time, for your attention today. And if you have any thoughts or feelings about this rucksack or any other piece of equipment, in fact, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your plans are for 2023. And until next time, enjoy your adventures this winter. Look after yourself and stay wild. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Bye.